It's time to look ahead to Monday's action in the NBA. This is what I'm watching for. Let's talk about it. The first game is the Courtney Lee Bowl, the Rockets and the Hornets. I want to watch the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate, who's starting. I'm not sure he's giving up that starting job all year, to be honest. Now, he's going to have offensive fluctuations, but he is putting up yeah, nice across-the-board production and will probably get some more minutes playing up big because of the Christian Wood absence. I want to watch what Tate can do. I want to see if he's worthy of a 12-team spot. He's probably more 14-team league, but taking a flyer in a 12-team is absolutely fine. I also want to watch Victor Oladipo because to say that he's been shit house since joining the Rockets, I think is maybe being unkind to shit houses because he has not been good in that time. Uh, he's, he's shooting under 30% from three, under 40% from the field. He is averaging 19 points, but it's coming on such large usage that uh, he's just yeah, falling his way into there. A PER of just 13 in his time in Houston, a usage of 31, a box score plus minus of minus 2.4. He looks horrible. I want to see if he can look better. For the Hornets, LaMelo Ball is crushing it. This dude is going to be a third round fantasy pick next year, at the very least, uh, maybe higher. He's uh, really playing well and should never move out of that starting lineup again. So let's see what he can do. Can he continue to play at this high level? There will be some clunkers in here for sure. Uh, whether this is one of them, I'm not sure. And then let's go to Cody Zeller, who is you know, locking down this starting center job. He's getting more minutes than he's ever gotten in his career. And this is a guy that you know, three, four years ago, I was just calling out, like, give this guy 30 minutes. He is a key piece in why you are winning games. Now, I've probably softened on that stance a bit, but we're actually seeing it now. He's playing big minutes. He's playing well. He's putting up numbers, and he's a must-roster player at this point in the season. Let's have a look at the Raptors and the Grizzlies, the Jonas Valanciunas Bowl. The wiki Chris Boucher, big minutes in each of the last two games as predicted against the Nets and the Hawks. I predict fewer minutes in this one against Valanciunas. Valanciunas is a big chunky boy. He is thick, he is strong, he's got a sexy beard, and he's going to create big problems for Boucher. Baines is also thick and chunky with a sexy beard, and I think they'll go to a few more Bainesy minutes here against um, Valanciunas. So don't panic about Boucher because there'll be better games coming up, and he's got some easier games coming up, although there is, I think, at the beginning of next week, two games back-to-back -back against the Bucks, which is not good for him. But this is what it's going to be like for him all season. And then Norm Powell, who, as a starter, plays big minutes, puts up good numbers, and then goes to the bench and shits the bed. He's going to start again, because OG Ananobi is out, and Powell is going to have some value. The Grizzlies did start the cashier, Xavier Tillman, over Valanciunas as he returned from his protocols. Will they continue with that? Um... It depends, I guess, if Brandon Clark is back as well. That has an impact. But Tillman should just settle into a nice backup role ahead of Gorgie Jeng would be my guess. And I've been very impressed with him. I've also been very impressed with Bain, Desmond Bain, who is the best shooting guard on this team. Maybe? Yes? Probably? I know it's controversial in some areas to say that, but he is. Uh, I want to see his minutes. Can he push to a 25-minute-a-night regular role? He should, but will he is the big question. Can he continue to shoot 50% from three? Absolutely not. But he can be a 40% guy. I'm very intrigued to see how they use him here. The next game, the Wizards and the Bulls, the Jabari Parker Bowl. Well, Alex Len started on Sunday and played like eight minutes because Scott Brooks is a horrendous coach. And Len's not that good, let's be honest. But Robin Lopez isn't the answer. Mo Wagner has been out of the rotation. He was back in. It's very hard to know what they're going to do. So I want to watch to see what Alex Len can do because he was putting up good numbers. I also want to watch Ish Smith. It's a back-to-back -back for the Wizards, so Russell Westbrook won't play. Um, and Smith has been getting assists at a very high rate recently, and he could be a stream option. I believe that Hal Neto is um, probably a better player, but Neto is also um, you know, coming back from his own injury. So it's unlikely that we're going to see big minutes of Hull. It's going to be Ish Smith who plays those big minutes there, and that is going to be something for us to watch. For the Bulls, Patrick Williams, there's no um, Otto Porter, who's dealing with his back issue. Larry Markkinen is questionable with his shoulder problem. Williams has played well and has played 30-plus minutes in three consecutive games, so I want to see if he can lock down a 30-minute role. And then I want to also watch Kobe White, who has been very disappointing, to say the least. There is whispers that Thomas Sadoransky could take some of his playing time. We saw them both play 27 minutes last game in a 26-point win over the Magic. White is not a starting point guard. Um, he is in name, but he's not in in, uh, in production or player type. So let's see what he actually gets to do in this game. Next is the Wolves and the Mavericks, the James Johnson Bowl. I want to watch Jaden McDaniels because I think he's been very impressive in his time so far. 
Will he ever get the nod to play big power forward minutes? I'm not sure, but he's played 29 and 24 in each of the last two. We don't know if Towns will be back for this game, and that's going to have an impact on where his minutes lie. But he's got to battle Vanderbilt. He's got to battle Lehman. He's got to battle Akogi. Hernan Gomez, I don't know whether he's going to get back into the rotation or not, but I want to watch to see how much they use McDaniels. And I want to watch Anthony Edwards, who has these big games, and he has absolutely shit for ones. But he's getting 30 minutes a night. He's going to take shots. Now, whether they go in or not is the big question. The majority of the time, they don't. But let's watch Anthony Edwards to see what he can provide. For the Mavericks, Maxi Kleber is starting. He should continue to start for most of the season. He will have occasional good nights. He'll have occasional poor nights. But as a relatively solid threes and blocks guy, he's significantly under-rostered. So let's see what he can do. Well, Dorian Finney-Smith, my projections keep liking him, and I don't really know why. He's not shooting very well this season. He can shoot better. He is getting minutes. He can get some steals. To me, he's more of a poor man's Royce O'Neal from a fantasy perspective, but he could be a Royce O'Neal's Royce O'Neal. That's the value he maybe could get to. Because I want to see if we can get anything positive out of Dorian Finney-Smith. The next game is the Warriors and the Spurs. The Steve Kerr Bowl. Let's see how the Warriors use Juan Toscano Anderson. JTA has been playing a pretty large role. Now, we could have the triangle Eric Pascal back, but Looney and Wiseman will remain out. So Toscano Anderson should start and play close to 30 minutes, but he's been 40 and 34 in each of the last two games against Dallas. So there's an opportunity for him to be a stream option for us here. And then Draymond Green, who's really stepped it up the last few games. Uh, Minutes have been up as well. He's getting assists. He had like combined four steals and six steals and blocks in the last game. Uh, And in fact, he doubled his block total, which he's done twice in the last week. He went from two blocks on the season to having two blocks in one game to putting at four for the season. And then he had four blocks in that last game to double it again. Now, I don't think he's going to have eight blocks to continue the Fibonacci sequence of block numbers. Is it right? Fibonacci? Yeah, it is the Fibonacci sequence. But uh, Draymond putting up some good numbers. For the Spurs, I always want to watch this bloke. Maximum Derek. Speaking of blocks, Derek White blocks a ton of shots. He's not quite there, and I told you for the first month or so, I thought it would be a little bit rough, and it hasn't been, it's been all right. It hasn't been great, it hasn't been terrible, but he's working his way back in, so I want to see how his minutes look, especially if Lonnie Walker returns. And then Jakob Pertl, who's been starting in place of LaMarcus Aldridge, wasn't that great in the last game. In fact, missed every one of his shots, which was amazing, but 30 minutes a night for him with no Aldridge, should be getting 30 plus once more, and is a 12-team league option for us. Next, we look at the Cavs and the Suns, the Marquise Chris Bowl. Darius Garland is playing at a pretty high level. He's still not rostered in anywhere near enough in the leagues. Don't be skewed by his high turnover numbers. They don't mean anything. You know my thoughts on turnovers. In points leagues, he's fine. He has to be rostered in every league. And now with the news that Larry Nance is out, Kevin Love is out, I'm very intrigued about Dylan Windler. I think Dylan Windler is a better player than Chetty Osman. I think Dylan Windler is a better player than Torian Prince. I think that they would be better served by just starting Dylan Windler at the four and seeing what the hell he does. At least playing him 20 minutes a night, they'll probably start Prince there. But I really want to watch what Windler can do. He's been impressive. And the Suns, I want to see that starting front court, the winning front court combination of Frank the Tank Kaminsky and DeAndre Ayton. Kaminsky starting is only playing 20 minutes a night. Ayton continues to be, if not the most frustrating, at least up in the top five most frustrating players in the entire NBA with his, I don't know, inability to be a big center. I don't, I don't even know how to describe the frustration I have with watching DeAndre Ayton, but I want to see him do something that's positive and from an offensive and attacking perspective, and I just don't think he's going to do it. But I want to watch it anyway to see where he goes. The Bucks and the Nuggets, the Kenyon Martin Bowl. I want to watch Punch Bob, Bobby Portis, the flat track bully, who in a blowout last game didn't play well, which was an absolute stunner to me. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. I imagine this game's close, so do we get 16-minute a night Portis? This is probably the night if you need to sit someone that you sit Portis. And I want to watch Chris Middleton, who has dropped off a little bit the last couple of games, wasn't that great against the Cavs, but has been excellent all season. For the Nuggets, it is Maga Porter Jr. Where do we see him? Um, he was atrocious in the last game. They put him back into the starting lineup. It doesn't give me much hope for him sticking in that starting lineup. But with Gary Harris out and Jamal Murray, the headmaster, questionable, and Faku Kampazzo questionable, and PJ Dozier out, he's probably going to get another start. He's probably going to play you know, solid enough minutes. But is it... Is, is he going to work his way into Malone's good graces? I'm not convinced. And I want to watch Jermichael Green, who is outplaying Paul Millsap almost every night. 
I'm not sure that Malone is ever going to make that change. But in terms of more minutes, Green is going to get them over Millsap. And there is value for him there in 14 team leagues because of that. The Thunder and the Lakers. It is a Dennis Schroeder revenge game. Let's watch Teo Maladon for the Thunder, who will get another start. I believe he's a must-roster 12-team league guy, and he will be the starting point guard for the rest of the season. That's based on nothing but logic, but that doesn't always make sense with NBA coaches. But I want to watch Maladon and see just how he controls the offense. But I'm more looking for game-to-game improvement from Teo. Also watch Al Horford, who's been just dicking blokes, really. He's been on fire since returning from the uh, birth of his child, putting up huge numbers, top 20 player over that time. Is it real? Probably not, but he should be rostered in every league. For the Lakers, I want to watch Schroeder, who has been disappointing, I'd say, this season. I don't believe he's a must-roster 12-team league player. Um, Definitely not a 10-team league guy, but let's see what he can do in his revenge game. And I want to watch Anthony Davis, who's been, by his standards, bad. Can't hit free throws. Blocks have been down at times. Usage isn't quite there. Efficiency's off. He just isn't the same player. I don't know if it's a lingering injury. I don't know if it's the absence of fans. I don't know if it's COVID affecting him personally in his personal life. I don't know, but he's way off, and I want to see that improve. Let's look at some stream options now. Alex Len is an option to stream, but you know the Scott Brooks fact is real. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Muxy Kleber is a stream. I think the cashier, Xavier Tillman. Has some value as well. And then Juan Toscano Anderson is another interesting stream option for Monday's action. Guys, that'll do it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell below. Give it a thumbs up as well and leave us a comment. Guys, we are done. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.